The strange things that make us afraid. Mark chapter 5. And verse uh, 1, Mark chapter 5, and verse 1. <clears throat> and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, Mark 5, and uh, verse 2. There met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who was dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not uh, with chains, because that he had uh, been often bound with fetters and chains, and chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Let's pray. Father, I, I need your help tonight. I uh, confess to you my inability, but I do... Uh, praise you for your ability, and I pray tonight that you would uh, control, and uh, Lord, help us to be taken into the Spirit here at church, and uh, hear the Word of God, and be spoken to. We need, we need your help. We need the power of God, and uh, we need the Spirit to lead and guide us into the truth of what the Scripture is saying, and then apply it to our hearts and our lives personally. Uh, we need fed, Father, and I pray tonight that that would happen. I uh, thank you that... Uh, your word is so powerful and your spirit is so great. And just move me out of the way and uh, speak tonight and help us to be impacted by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is a scary man. Uh, he was a man who was uh, in the mountains and tombs. And uh, they end up living basically in a graveyard. He's running around um, and uh, chaotic. And um, he was... Uh, it says, uh, his dwelling was among the tombs, and no man could bind him, not with chains. So a scary man. This man, uh, he's just dwelling where nobody else is. And we're going to read, there, there's three passages in the New Testament that, that talk about this story. And, and uh, but this man, can you imagine this man? He has no clothes. He's, 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 ter- he's, he's just a fearful man, living alone, uh, living in a graveyard, living among the tombs. Um, it's, nothing's normal about all of that. It says he's cutting himself, um, so he's going to be filled with scars. And, of course, you don't have sharp knives and everything. And and uh, and, uh, and crying out and screaming. And and, uh, and by the way, it's interesting that, 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 uh, um, that, 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 that this guy has demonically oppressed and is cutting himself. And I found as our society gets more demonically oppressed, I find that happens in our society. And uh, you know we've talked to a lot of people and dealt with people and we're we're patient with people who cut who cut themselves and do that stuff. Just you know that nobody did that when I was a teenager, and it it it, it just wasn't a thing. But our society's gotten a lot more gory and a lot more into demonic things, and it's kind of everywhere in the entertainment. And if somebody does, they need patience and kindness, and they need the Lord. We find always they get healed up of it as they get close to the Lord, and then they stop, and everything gets right. Um, it's because it's, it's demonic. The, the, the prophets of Baal do the same thing in First Kings 17. They cut themselves, and uh, and the devil loves to destroy the temple. And, and it's just uh, one of the things, for whatever reason, the demons like doing. And uh, and uh, so sometimes before people knew the Lord or before they're close to God or before they knew they were in a good church or whatever, they do that. And, and uh, But uh, understand this man is doing the same thing. And there's a bunch of things. Uh, when, when you're around de- demonism, you end up having an obsession with dead things. He's living in tombs. Uh, you're always uh, zombies and vampires and, and 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 death and skulls and all that stuff. It's always it's always the same things, and it just comes out a little different in different societies. But uh, um, that's kind of where 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 it is. This man's scary, cutting himself, no clothes, living in the tombs. Um, a, a, a very uh, scary man. He's. Uh, He's incredibly powerful. They bind him with chains and just breaks the chains. Can you imagine verse uh, verse four? Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Nobody could control this guy. They tried to. They they called the the magistrates and the police, and they tried to lock him up, and and they would chain him, and he'd break the chains. And then when he'd get, get alone, somehow he'd have these big metal you know, fetters on him, and he'd break those off too. Nobody can control him. He's so physically strong. 
and uh, that's that's very common in demonic possession. I know, talking to uh, one of our uh, one of our friends, uh, brother Hanada in Zambia, um, he says the farther out in the jungle you go, the more uh, direct the possession is. And he says when it, these women will throw five men around uh, when they're trying to control them, and uh, and and they get the supernatural strength, and uh, and that's pretty scary. It's pretty scary. This man had thousands of demon in in him. He asked, "What's your name?" And he said, "Legion." A legion is a, it's a big, a big army. As I have, a, I have an army of demons in me, and uh, and and he was kind of torment in the area. If you go back to Matthew chapter eight, can you imagine if this guy was hanging around outside church? So what if that guy lived down the street from you, or in the graveyard, the nearest graveyard to your, to your area? And the police said, "Look, we have locked him in jail. He bends the bars. He gets out." Um, this man, he, he, he's bloody, he's naked, he screams, he, he's, he, he keeps going back to the graveyard. Can you imagine how scared you would be and your family and going out and all those things? Can you imagine the good threats you could get with your kids, though? If you don't clean your room, I'm taking you to the tombs. And uh, that's not funny, is it? And, uh, but uh, uh, how scary that would be. How, half of you thought that was funny. Half of you look back. Wrong with that guy, and uh, and uh, and so, um, but but th- this guy, what? That'd be freaky. That'd be scary. We, we would we'd be that'd be a scary thing. And uh, Matthew chapter five, or Matthew chapter, I said Matthew chapter eight in verse uh, uh, twenty-eight. It said, uh, and when he was come to the other side of the country of the Gadarenes, there met him uh, two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs. I'll talk about that in a sec. Exceedingly fierce, so no man that passed by. No man might pass by that way. I believe when, when Jesus came there, one of them ran off in fear, and one of them came to Jesus. And, uh, and, and, and so people wouldn't even pass by this area because of the fear, and, and, and they had that. So go back to Mark in chapter, uh, Mark in chapter uh, 5. So this man's scaring everybody. Everybody's afraid of him. Nobody wants to go by that area. I wouldn't want to go by that area. Okay? Nobody wants to go by that area. And Jesus came. When Jesus came, the demons became afraid. Verse 6. It says this, And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. I love that. The demon says, I adjure you. Please, by God, don't torment us. <laughs> the demons are even getting spiritual. And, uh, and, and, and doing that thing. And... Uh, and I'm sure Jesus said, oh, since you asked me by God, I'll leave you alone. And, uh, but uh, that's what the, the demons do, because they're afraid. They're afraid of Jesus, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. When Jesus came, the demons were afraid. Before that, everybody else is afraid. Okay? And, uh, and so the demons are afraid of him, of course. And they do that. And, but you know the strange thing is, you know the story, Jesus... Uh, cast the dead. They said, don't send us to hell. Uh, by the way, demons aren't in hell. Most of them, most of them are here in the world. Um, I think Jesus can send them to hell. They can be banished to hell and go there ahead of time. But they're really cast into hell at the end of everything. They're, they're all around you. And, uh, and, uh, and so, um, but, but they say, don't send us to hell yet, please. It's not the time yet. And before our time, because Jesus at any time could say, all right, go to hell. We're done with you. And, uh, and so demons, when they cast out, they wander, looking for another body is what they do. Okay? If you read Matthew 13, they're, they're, they're here. Okay? And, and so, <clears throat> um, and Jesus casts them into the pigs. The pigs go and run and freak out and go crazy. And they go into the water and jump in the water and they all die. And, uh, and so, woo! Can you imagine? If, if, if this man go, comes to Jesus, says three things. He was seated at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind. Okay? Uh, when, uh, when you get saved, you want to be with Jesus. Uh, and that's what he says later. He says that he wanted to be, be with him. On um, verse 15, it says, They came to Jesus uh, him, to see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. They were afraid. So, uh, when uh, demons like us who take off clothes, remember? Uh, when they came down from the mountain, when, Jesus, when Moses came down from the mountain, they were in idolatry. What did they do? Take off the clothes. Because immodesty is a sign of demonic activity. Okay? That's, that's our society. As it gets more demonic, will get more immodest. Okay? And uh, that's what happens. And so, uh, and he was in his right mind. He was fixed. 
mentally. Okay? Everybody in town came to see this guy, and here he is. He has clothes on. He's sitting at Jesus' feet, listening, talking. I want to be with you and go with you. And he's sane. And they looked into his eyes, and he was sane, and he was normal. And everyone in the city said, no more. We can go this way now. No more of that worrying about that guy and hearing him screaming over the hill at night. No more nightmares. And all. This is wonderful. Jesus, come into our town. We got other problems in our town. That would be rational. <laughs> okay? But that's not what happens. That's not what happens. Matthew chapter, or Mark chapter 5, and verse 15 uh, when they came to Jesus to see him, that was possessed the devil. They had, they had legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. They were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell that he, uh, befell that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him, depart out of their coasts. I said, hey, get out of here, Jesus. Get, get, get out of here. Go, go, go. Leave our country. Why in the world do you want him to leave? You finally found someone who could fix the problem. And they asked him to leave. And, 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 and Jesus tells him, hey, just go to your people. Huh? Go to your people. They, he said, can I go with you, Jesus? No, go to your family and friends. Tell them what great things God has done for you. Later we'll find out this man reaches city, and the whole city comes back to greet him because of the testimony of this crazy guy. And, uh, and, and he reached them as Jesus commanded but they didn't want Jesus in town anymore. I said, why? And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. What did he do? He saved them from the crazy guy. The torment of the area. It was dangerous. They broke the chains. Can you imagine all, all the time thinking, what could we do? We, we, we can't chain the guy up. We, if the guy wants to come into our town and start killing people, I mean, can you imagine? As you hear him screaming, it, that that's scary. Yet they say to Jesus, "Hey, leave, get out of here, leave, leave our town." It's strange the things that people don't want and the things that people are afraid of. It's strange. Luke chapter eight. What does it say? Luke chapter eight, talking about the same thing here in verse thirty-seven. Luke eight. Verse 37, Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. They were afraid. They said, Jesus, leave. We're afraid. Is that rational? What did he do? Did he turn into this great monster? Did he? What did Jesus do? What was scary about him? than the man who is possessed. But it's strange the things that scare us sometimes. It's strange the things that scare us and, 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 and why they're afraid of that. It's strange. We don't always know the reason. We don't always see all this. Let me just, just say a couple simple thoughts here. Number one, we, sometimes we fear the change Jesus will bring even if it's needed. Sometimes we fear the change Jesus will bring, even if it's needed. You know, it's just, you know, and you want to see something strange. Some guy, man, I'm not afraid of anything, man. I'm, okay. You want to come to church with me? Um, you know, I'm not really comfortable in church. Well, he, if you ever try to rationalize with someone who's afraid, and they won't say I'm afraid to come to church, but they're afraid to come to church. And you try to rationalize why don't you want to come to church? There's no rationale to it. We don't do human sacrifices. Uh, we, don't, uh, uh, we don't beat people with rods. We don't do snake handling. Uh, we don't do anything weird. Um, most churches don't. But there, I had a friend, uh, one, of my, one of my best friends. We, we were nutso teenagers. And, uh, and I remember me and him went to go see um, uh, Roman White get baptized. And my friend, who I watched him start so many fights because he loved to fight, we did such crazy things in rivers and on you name it, everywhere. Just crazy things everywhere. We were, we were nuts. We were dangerous living teenagers and uh, did stupid, stupid, stupid things. When we went to church, my friend was shaking like a little girl. He was shaking. He was physically shaking. I said, what is wrong with you? 
Now, I was nervous going there. I didn't want to go. Everything fought me to go, but I went with him. He said, I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't stop shaking. It was a nice little community church. I mean, there was nothing. It was, but he was scared. And he told me afterwards, I don't know why I was so scared. You know, it's strange what we're afraid of. Sometimes we don't want change, the change it'll bring, even if it's needed. You know, sometimes somebody's in a bad relationship, and, and it's a scary relationship. Sometimes a guy's threatening to kill her. And when you talk to her about leaving the relationship, all of a sudden she gets nervous. Well, if I leave, what will happen? <laughs> and they're afraid to leave a dangerous or abusive relationship. It's strange that, that, that there are things that need to happen in our lives and we're afraid of them. We, we're, somebody's in a, in, a, in a crazy, weird church, and they're afraid to leave and start going to the right church. Because the devil is trying to make you afraid of the things you need the most. Why are these people afraid of Jesus? All, all he did was come to the shore and get the demons out of the guy. He didn't kill anybody. He didn't send thunder down and fry the guy. Okay? He didn't do anything. He cast the demons into the pigs, and the pig ran down there. And you know what? What do they care about pigs? They're Jewish. Okay? But they're afraid of Jesus. See, because the devil's trying to make us be afraid. <clears throat> I, I've seen this so many times that people complain about the situation in life. Their, li their drugs have made their life terribly miserable. They're just afraid to get out of the drug culture. They're afraid. Not something's threatened. There's no logic to it. There's nobody threatening to kill them. Their friends probably say, man, I'm glad you did that, man. That's a good thing. I wish I could do that. This is their friends say. But they're afraid. Because that's what the devil does. You'll have someone who will sleep on the street. Very common. Homeless, the homeless situation we have. And they'll be sleeping on the street. And, and you know what? It's scary to sleep on the street. It's scary weather. It's scary people. It's scary everything. And they'll, they'll, But they're more afraid many times of stepping back into society and getting a job. And if you ask me to explain that, I've talked to them. I've tried to reason with them. And you know what? It does not make sense. It does not make sense, but they're afraid of it. Sometimes things, we do that. Sometimes someone will say, I want to change my life. My life's so messed up. I want to change it. We'll say, awesome. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll work with you, and the Lord can change you, and we just need you to commit to come to church every week and, and meet with us. Uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of commitments. <clears throat> you... you you just got out of jail, you have a drug addiction, you, or, or you have an abusive relationship, you, you, have, you have this serious anger problem, you're afraid of this and that coming upon you, you got all these fears, and we have the answer, and you're afraid of a commitment to sit in a building for an hour and a half once a week. Really? I'm just afraid of a commitment. I, I was hurt one time. Okay. Do you know that's not really very logical? It's really, it's really not very logical. So some creepy guy 20 years ago, when you married him, he beat him a creep and beat you, and now you're afraid to sit in a building for an hour and a half on one time a week. In a free, in, we, we have an exit. You can walk right out. You're, you're afraid to go and... Hey, we have a lady who might be able to help you. I want to have you, ah, you know what? I'm just a little nervous about that. You know, I don't want to... I, I, I don't know, you know, everything here. And I'm, your life's a mess. But it doesn't always make sense. Because the devil always tries to get you afraid of those who can help you. And the things that can help you. Afraid of commitment. Afraid of all those things. Afraid of the change in your life. This job is ruining your life. You're just afraid to quit it. Strange thing. This is a skilled person who can find a better job. They still won't leave their job. I hate these apartments. They're terrible. It's, man, people around me, there's drugs, there's violence. People shoot each other. 
You know what? You need to move. Nah, you know what? I'm afraid if I move out of there, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, you might not have people shooting each other outside. Okay. But we're afraid of things. And it doesn't always make sense. Jesus, just go ahead and leave. Leave, leave, leave. We're scared. Look, this guy's normal. This is good. What are you afraid of? But the devil tries to make you afraid. I'd rather stay in defeat than face the unknown of victory. Let's go to 2 Timothy 1.7. 2 Timothy 1. And verse 7, very important verse. I've been dwelling on this verse a lot and learning a lot about it. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I don't want to bore you with the Greek, but there's a lot of important things in this. And uh, the, the, the power, the word power there is, is uh, dunamis. It's, it's explosive force. We've got this great spirit of power. The word spirit is a very broad term in the Bible. And uh, uh, nuyuma is, is the word here. Um, we get the word for a whole bunch of things in, in English, pneumatics and pneumonia and stuff. It's, it's the word breathe, the breath. And, and when it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, I don't think this reference is to the Holy Spirit. It's not capitalized like it usually does the Holy Spirit. I don't think it's talking about the Holy Spirit. The word spirit is a very general term in the Bible. It's used for many things. The spirit of man will sustain his infirmity. The word spirit is often used about a man's spirit. The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord. Okay, there's a lot of verses on a man's spirit. And, 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 and so the Holy Spirit is a person, but there is a spirit also about things. Demons are also called spirits. And then the spirit of man and, and, and many spirits. And you see many times when a spirit, the word can also be translated the vital principle or a mental disposition. It's kind of, it, it, the actual definition is the current of air. It's something you, it's something you feel. It's, it's like, a, it's like you, a, a spirit, you'd feel an, a breeze on you. That's, that's, that's the closest thing you get to what the word literally means. Well, there is, in, in when it talks about the spirit of man and, and many things about the spirit, it's, it's the closest thing we would use in our vocabulary is an attitude. Okay, that's be the closest thing. It's not exactly that. It's more than that. It's more part of your strength you have inside. But w- when it defines it as a vital principle, it's, it's, this is my spirit. This is what's controlling me. This is what I'm all about. That's my spirit. A person in the Bible talks about a, a person with an angry spirit, for example. That's, that's the, the vibe you get. That's the, that's the breath that you, you walk to that person and you meet them and you say, that's an angry man. They have an angry spirit. And, and that, that blows at you. It's, it's, it's the breeze you get from them. Okay? And so... Um, and, and so, when it's talk, not talking about the Holy Spirit, it's this, it's this, it's the attitude, the vibe, the, the, the strength inside of them. It's what their, their vital principle their, of, of them is. It, it also uh, can be your mental disposition. A current of air, your vital principle, or uh, a mental disposition. And so God has not given us this, this vibe, this, this thing of fear. This spirit upon us. This is not what we walk around with. This isn't our attitude. It does not mean you almost walk in the street, almost get hit by a car, and you step back and say, okay, fear is normal. Okay? Uh, you, you were afraid for a second there. Okay? You're some guy in his 50s, and all of a sudden you feel this pain in your side. And all of a sudden, it, then you realize, I'm not having a heart attack. Okay, good, but I was scared for a second there. Okay? And, and whatever it is, fear is normal. Okay, that's a normal event. If a pit bull's running after you, you get scared. It makes you run faster. It produces adrenaline, all kinds of things. Nothing wrong with fear, just a moment of fear. But the spirit of fear, there's something wrong with that. Okay, so uh, my child runs out the street, I'm afraid. That's normal. It makes you run out there and pull my kid up the street. But if I walk around all the time with the spirit of fear, God's not giving me that. He's giving me the spirit of power, conquering, of love, the spirit of love. Hey, this is this is what you feel for me, and the spirit of a sound mind. Uh, this man thinks clearly. This woman has a clear thinking. She has a spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind, but never a spirit of fear. That person's afraid. I want to say there's some very big, strong, strapping men who have the spirit of fear on them. They're afraid of everything. 
I'm afraid of the government. I'm afraid of my wife. I'm afraid of my kids. I'm afraid of the. I'm afraid of the economy. I'm afraid of the. I'm afraid they're going to take my guns. I'm afraid of the. I'm afraid of that. And just walk around afraid. They base their life on fear. God does not lead by fear. God leads by peace. He's not given us a spirit of fear. Okay, um, and, and and boy, there's a lot of verse on this. I, I was going to write them all down. I write them all down. But perfect love casts out fear, for fear as torment. There's a lot of verses about God as, as getting rid of fear. We are not given the, the bondage again to fear. Okay, and, and, and other passages, 1 John, Romans 6, other passages, they talk about we don't have that spirit of fear upon us. We're fine. Uh, and, 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 and look, we live in a day of terrible fear. We're afraid of everything. What if, the what if syndrome. What if, what if, what if, living with fear. What if, what if, what if, what if. Yep. Okay. Take no thought of tomorrow. That is, pull up a couple studies on fear, <laughs> and, and they're they're calling this. Uh, they're, they're calling us now a society of fear because so many people are living with fear. <laughs> and, and you know, political fear is constant. If a Republican wins, the Democrats are afraid he's going to destroy the country and 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 and, and uh, cancel the elections. And if a Democrat gets in office. The Republicans are afraid. He's going to destroy the country and cancel the elections. We're going to become a dictatorship. They all live in fear all the time. That's how they win elections. That's how they raise money. Okay? And, and, and by the way, a church shouldn't lead by fear. That's a cult. Okay? That's a cult. Okay? And, 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 and parents shouldn't lead by fear. That's not the primary thing. They should lead by love. Lead by wisdom. Perfect love casts out fear. If, if a child loves, they, they don't need to fear their parent. Okay, we we have an ultimate if we have to a fear for God, but that's not the way the Christian life is lived. Christian life is not lived. I'm afraid of God. I'm afraid of God. The Christian life is is lived. I love God, so I want to obey Him. That perfect love makes us don't have to fear God. Okay, if a child obeys their parents, they don't have to fear their parents. A perfect love makes us that I'm not afraid of God. I have that reverence for God that's there. Eventually, I know if I mess around, God will do anything. But I don't walk around with a spirit of fear about God. I know if I go off and do a bunch of dumb things and leave God and forsake God, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, I understand that God is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. But you know what? I don't have that spirit upon me. I'm not thinking about it because I'm not leaving God. I'm not doing sin. I'm loving God. And so I'm not living with the spirit of fear. And you don't need to live with the spirit of fear because you have God. And he can take care of everything. I got a couple different studies and on fear, and one's from 2015, one's from 2016, and and so they rated things one to four. I'm not afraid, or four. I'm very afraid. And here's the things that were people are very afraid of. 58 percent of people were afraid of corruption of government officials. 44.8 were afraid of cyber terrorism. 44.6 were very afraid of corporate tracking of personal information. 44.4 were very afraid of terrorist attacks. 41.4, 41.4, government tracking our personal information. 40.9, bio warfare. 39.6, identity theft. 39.2, economic collapse. Running out of money, 37.4. Credit fraud, 39. Uh, 36.9. <laughs> this one, 41, this study is 60% of corruption of government officials. Same top fear as the year before. Terrorist attacks, 41%. Not having enough money for the future, 39.9. You know, it's a high percentage of people are, are very afraid of all of multiple things. <laughs> Look, you, some of us have a fear of, 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 of not having money in five minutes, uh, let alone a financial future. And, uh, but uh, a government restriction of firearms ammunition, 38.5. People I love dying, 38.1. Economic collapse, 39.5. Identity theft and so on and so forth. People love becoming seriously ill, 39.5, and, and so on and so forth. We're in a society of fear. <clears throat> there shouldn't be a 39, 49, 50, 60 percent fear of anything. Do you know you live in one? You live in about the most secure time in the human history. But that doesn't give me security. God gives me security. Okay. Look, I understand probably better than anybody in this room economic numbers and the, 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 the deficit and the debt and what it means and understand what that comes from and what all it means. I get all that stuff. I understand. I, pro- I understand a bunch about banking and the problems of the bank. I understand the complete shaky ground we're on economically. 
Okay, I understand all that. Aren't you afraid? No. God supplies my needs. I'll be fine. When it, whenever you're not afraid, what inevitably happens is people say, you just don't know. <laughs> no, I know. You know, people, Pastor, you just, you'd be more afraid of people if you know how dangerous it was out there. Look, I've been in more dangerous places than you. There's nobody in this room who's been in more dangerous places than me. Probably no two people. Do you know what? I'm not worried. I'm not going to have a spirit of fear. Not because I'm so incredible or wonderful or smart or anything else, but you know what? I just learned God can take care of whatever. What if they come and get your guns, Pastor? Well, well, my guns aren't my security. What if they take your food? Well, my food's not my security. I got dogs, I'll eat them. And, uh, but, you know, that's why you have big dogs, okay? They protect you, and in a famine, you're fine. And, uh, and uh, the other half that I lost earlier uh, about uh, the kids thing, and now I talk about eating dogs, I've lost everybody. And, uh, but you know what? If you don't get, people are so scared. Yep. I remember I had this little period of when I was a kid. I remember they, they said, uh, they, they, they said, uh, there was all kinds of fears. This is be late 70s, now it'll be early 80s. Um, and they're all talking about a bunch of bad things. These, these African bees were coming and, 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 uh, and, uh, and acid rain and uh, global cooling and California is going to fall into the ocean and all these things. And, uh, you know, I learned that if California falls in the ocean, it's a good thing. And, uh, but, uh, you know, but, you know, I remember this period of fear and all this stuff. And, you know, when I became, I, I used to be claustrophobic and thisophobic. And I, I was afraid of so many things. And I was afraid of the dark as a kid and all these things. And really, it was part of a messed up childhood. You know, when I got saved, I became very secure and not afraid because I had Jesus Christ. But, people, but it's strange people are afraid of things that are good for them. They're afraid of what will help them. You know how crazy life used to be not that long ago? Everyone's so afraid of, of somebody killing them and traffic. And, and Do you know what we have? Do you know? You ready for this? Talk about seatbelts and texting and airbags. My airbag light's on. I'm afraid to drive my car. You know we didn't have airbags in the back of our trucks when we rode in them. We used to ride in the back of a pickup without, forget seatbelts, seats, and airbags. And there was no side impact airbag. There was nothing. Don't tell anybody. You know what we used to do? We'd stand up in the back of the dumb thing. That's what roll bars are for. We live so much differently. We're so... We live in this, this, this society is getting more and more demonic, and as it gets more demonic, it gets more fearful. Everybody's afraid of everything. And everybody, you know, every little thing. Uh, hand sanitizer. There might be germs. <laughs> germs. Come on. You don't even need the five-second rule. 20 seconds, you'll survive. We're in a clean society. You know how clean your, society, your, you know how clean your food is? Stop being afraid of everything. I'm not saying don't wash your hands and don't look both ways before you cross the street. I'm not saying this. But don't walk, oh, He's looking at me. He might, uh, you know what? This food might be, might have salmonella in it. Uh, uh. <laughs> weird, man. Just eat what's set before you. You know, you don't have to have 16 levels. They always say when a mom is first a mom, her pacifier, she uses witch hazel and rubbing alcohol, then she sprays it down, then she rinses it off, and then she finally gives it to her baby. By the third child, she finds it on the ground. Gives to the baby, and, be, and and you know what? Cause you learn, you'll survive. You'll survive. But this spirit of fear permeates everything. He sneezed, <gasps> and, and that's the way we live. <clears throat> Stop with the spirit of fear. Okay, and especially afraid of things are going to help you. I need to talk to Pastor about this. I'm so afraid. I am mean. And then you're, you sit there with the same problem for four months because you're so afraid to ask me this one question. And you go up and say, Pastor, I have been waiting to ask you this all this time. Here's this question. What should I do? I don't know. 
what the? That wasn't as scary as I thought. Pray about it. The devil makes you afraid of things that are going to help you. And good decisions. Quit thinking about the same dumb decision for six months you need to do. I need to do this. I'm just afraid to do it. And it's not that scary. Be logical. And if not, be courageous. And say, I need to do this thing. Hey, you know what? Let's bring Jesus into town. I don't know why I'm afraid of the guy. I just got rid of the scary guy. Let's bring him into town. Maybe there's some other scary things in town he can fix. But they get rid of him when he does that. <clears throat> I'm afraid of being single. No. Get out of that bad relationship. It's not that scary to be single. You'll survive. There's no single demon that's going to eat you. and It's just not that scary. There's, but we get so afraid of things. We won't get in a bad relationship because we're afraid. Well, stop it. Okay? Don't be afraid of things that are going to help you. Don't be afraid of... Don't live in the spirit of fear. Number one. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> so, sometimes we fear very long sermons. And uh, that'll help you. Sometimes we fear that the change will Jesus will bring even if it's needed. I know I need to change this stuff, and I'm so afraid. You know how often that, you know every one of us does that at some point. I know I need to fix this stuff, and I'm so afraid. No, what you're in is scary. Just fix it. It's, I know it's scary to take that first step, but Jesus will be with you and he'll help you. Number two, we fear things, we're not, that, uh, we fear things are not exactly what we're familiar with. Let's go to Mark chapter 6. Let's go to the next Right after this happens, they send Jesus out of town. We fear things that are not exactly what we are familiar with. Mark 6. So they send Jesus out of town. He goes and does some miracles. He goes back to his hometown. And he went out from thence and came, this is Mark 6, and went and came into his own country, and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach them in the synagogue, many, uh, and many uh, hearing uh, him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? What wisdom is this which is given unto him? And even such mighty works are wrought by his hand. Okay? So, and we can follow this story and read it the Gospels. They're going to say, He did miracles. How is he doing such amazing things? And where did this of wisdom come from? They're going to say, in another passage, they were astonished at his doctrine. So Jesus comes back to his hometown, and they said, Good night. That is incredible. Whoa. Have you ever heard anything like this? The truth, I've never heard anything like that. It's unbelievable. Then he does miracles. He heals Jerry's uh, daughter and does the miracles. And people who are dead come to life. And he, they see these miracles. And they look and they go, Isn't this, where did he get this from? Isn't that Mary's son and Joseph's son? And we know his brother's. Is that really him? Where did he get that power from? Where did he get that wisdom from? Where did he get those incredible words? It's awesome. We need to learn from this guy. Verse 3. Is not this a carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. (laughs) Wow, that guy's doing incredible things. He's speaking incredible things. I'm furious. It's just Jesus. Yeah, and he spoke amazing things and did miracles. And they're saying, where did he get that from? And they were offended. They were, the Greek word scandalized at him. And Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and his own house. Why? Why? Because they thought they knew who he was. But his ministry did not start until he was 30. He was a carpenter. And then when it was revealed who he really was, it wasn't what they expected and what they thought. And people like what they're used to in their comfort zones. And he said, you know what? This is, this is irritating. You're just, you're just Jesus. That's your sister and that's your brother. You know what? We don't like this. 
You like you're some mighty man of God, like you can do miracles and stuff. I don't know how you do those miracles. I don't know where you got those amazing words from. I don't know, but it's, it's offensive because you're just a guy. Because what they expected and what they're used to wasn't what it was, and that offended them because they thought they knew everything. Because someone surprised them and impressed them. It doesn't make any sense. Jesus, uh, let me go somewhere else. I can do greater things here. But the familiarity often makes things offensive. We already know that. We do not reverence or appreciate familiar things. If you know someone and you're close to them and they are great, it'll actually irritate you when someone comes on in and acknowledges them as great. They're not so great. They're just, they're just them. They're my friend. I've been friends with them. With, I've been friends with them for 10 years. What are you talking about? Well, they just did this. Well, yeah, but I know them. It's just, it's just them. They're not that great. It's a strange thing, but we like everything to be where we're at the top. And we know what's going on. And we're used to everything. And a prophet goes to his own country and they say, we know you. It doesn't matter how great a prophet he is. They did it to Jesus. They said, oh, it's just Jesus. We, we know he is. That's why greatness is not appreciated um, around familiar surroundings. That's why great parents aren't appreciated by their kids. or just, just, just my mom and dad. They're nothing great. Why does everybody talk so highly of them? That's what people will say. Eventually, you'll first come to the church and you'll say, man, this is the best church ever. Love it. I learned so much. And eventually what will happen if you're normal, eventually you'll say, somebody else will come in and say, this church is so great. It's so incredible. And you'll say, you know, I've been, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good church, but I've been coming here for 10 years. It's, oh, pastor, you know, I mean, you, you'll, you'll learn a lot, but you know, I've already heard that story. He's all right. And, you know, it's just, the new convert comes and says, boy, the Bible's incredible. And after a few while, you become familiar and say, well, you know, I've already read the Bible a lot of times. It's fine. It's good. It's a good book. But you lose your, you lose your mystique about these things. Why? Because no matter what, look, you live in the richest country in the history of the world and people complain about it all the time. Why a bunch of them are coming here and kissing the ground and saying, I made it! I made it! It's so great! What a wonderful country! Look at these opportunities! Many people say, this country stinks, man. All those oppressed people. It's a terrible country. The poor people are all miserable. Rich people have all the money. Do you not know how rich our poor people are? Did they, they never go where, they never see poverty. So they don't know that our poor people are poor. Okay, and 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 oh, I've had I've had American poor a million times. So, Pastor, you don't understand. You've never been in the really poor area. I've been in all the poor areas. I've been in the poorest areas in America. They are wealthy. They're fat people. There's no obesity problem there. They have running water. They have heaters. They have a door that locks. They have a couch. They have a big screen. with me to Haiti. We'll show you poverty. Poverty in America. 35% of American children are hungry every day. That's because their parents are too lazy to cook for them. Their kitchen is full of food. Poverty in America. But you think it's a terrible country? Why? Because you're used to it. Let me send you overseas. Let me pick the country. Let me send you overseas. Give me three weeks. You'll come back and kiss the ground. But it's, it's, it's a terrible country. Yes, you're used to it. You don't know how good it is to go click and the lights come on and put your mouth, back in the day, underneath the sink and drink water. Now I know it has to be bottled. <clears throat> but you can drink, you can drink not only water out of your faucet, you can drink it out of your hose. But, you think, but, but we're there and we 
get familiar with something, we say, you know what, it's not that great, and we get afraid. You know what, go ahead and leave Jesus. We're, we're, we know who you are, and you think you're something because you can do these miracles, and, but we know the truth about you. You're just a carpenter's son. You know, this is not. And Jesus said, I can't do anything here. You guys have no faith. We are not reverent or appreciative of familiar things. You know, sometimes people will say, keep me in my messed up world. Because it's comfortable and I'm used to it. I've learned it. I've learned to live in this messed up world. Somebody brings change. No, 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 no. People will say they want change until it comes to really time and all of a sudden they'll back out. Because they're very happy in misery. Keep me in my familiar surroundings and my familiar surroundings aren't very good. But I'm afraid of something better. And you know, it's a weird thing. Somebody will get convicted and convicted and convicted about their life, and they'll want to really, okay, I need to change things around. And all of a sudden, they'll take step, 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 and then it comes time to walk off the edge into the new realm, and they'll say, nope. Why? Because sometimes you fear things you don't need to fear. And the change Jesus would have brought to that town, maybe they didn't want that. And so they say, don't, 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 Jesus, uh, why don't you go ahead and leave? Man, I'm glad that guy's not around, got crazy anymore. But you know what? We, we don't want you here. We have, we've learned to tolerate our, our little land here. Our little city is, is okay. You know, you just go ahead and go away. What if somebody else gets possessed like that? What about other people with problems? What about the people who died in your city? What about the people who are sick? What about the people who need healed? What about the lepers in your town? No, 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 we're fine at that. You know what? We don't want a big change. Just, just go ahead and go. We're afraid of you. All I did is heal the guy who was possessed with demons, who was screaming and cutting himself with knives and terrorizing you guys, and you couldn't even come this way. No, no, just leave. We don't want to hear it. We're, ha we're happy here. We're happy in failure. We're happy. And we're afraid of anything better because this is what we know. We're used to it. So go ahead and go. We'll, we'll, let us go back to our miserable lives. Because we know misery, and we know, how to, we know how to cope in here. If you make anything good and fix this thing, what are we going to do with the lepers who are healed? I mean, where are they going to live? And now here comes the fears. Here comes the fears. And, and, and so they don't do that. So let's make sure we're not afraid of uh, things that, that are going to help us. Don't be afraid. Don't have the spirit of fear. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God, and I pray we would uh, understand. We don't need to live in fear and help us, especially not to be afraid of the things that help us the most, that don't make sense. Lord, some people have to step out of their comfort realms in their life to fix what's okay or bad, and the devil makes them afraid. Lord, I pray that we would not be afraid of that which is going to help us. Lord, they left. They kicked Jesus out of town after he got rid of the scary thing. But Lord, we're not always logical, and the devil puts us in fear. I pray that we'd get rid of that spirit of fear and get the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind and live that way. Father, think of the word of God, and I pray we'd, uh, we'd learn this. And if you're speaking to us, I pray that we would live. Uh, we would step out and get out of our little realm of fear and get to the area that's going to help us and, get, and come to you. And do the things that, that we might be afraid, the unknown. But the unknown with Jesus is better. Father, help us to live there. We thank you for the scripture that shows us these things in Jesus' name. Pianist is coming, and we just want to ask you. He's just going to start playing, and I'm just going to keep talking. And I just want to talk to you today. So either you kind of knew what I was talking about or you didn't. If you knew what I was talking about, <clears throat> maybe the devil, you know, is talking to you about scary things. And you're a courageous person, but the devil's given you a spirit of fear about something, about trusting, about, about just following what Jesus has for you. Maybe you know what. Maybe you're you, you you know you need to fix something, but you're afraid that you're not. You're gonna afraid you're gonna fail. You're afraid you can't do it, but you know that you need to do it, and and you're like, Jesus, leave town. Don't do that. It's, it's where you should be.